uh, and who will deliver his uh, talk. Uh, you probably remember of him from his award, award, uh, award D, as he's an awardee of the best prize poster, the best poster prize. And uh, he will, um, he will uh, deliver us a talk uh, uh, entitled Towards Predicting and Controlling Ionic Hydration Patterns in Nanopores. Uh, thank you, Miroslav. Please, when you, when you feel ready, start. Thank you very much, Antonio, for introduction. And thank you very much uh, to the organizers of this nice workshop for inviting me to show my results. Just a quick uh, check. Can you see my screen, my main screen uh, with the title? Uh, not for now, not for now. Oh, sorry, maybe I just... Yeah. Uh, my bad. Um, screen, um, yeah. Uh, for some, for some yes. reason, it's, yes. it's, it's flickering. It's... Oh, okay, um, I see. Let, let us try uh, one second, otherwise we, I think we will, uh, uh, since we have time, I think we will uh, uh, have five minutes short break, for time for a quick coffee, and then we will back, we will back for your, uh, for your presentation. What about now? Uh, not now, but we will see as this is the proof that okay. Now we have okay. Now we have your screen. So feel free to start whenever you're ready, Miroslav. Okay. So thank you so much. Uh, th thank you, Antonio. Once again, good morning, everyone. Uh, and <clears throat> what I wanted to show today is uh, the work related to hydration and. Uh, transport of, of ions through nano uh, scale devices. First, uh, yesterday we saw a wonderful talk by uh, Professor Corey, uh, who emphasized in line, of, in line with other uh, selectivity mechanisms, uh, the importance of the dehydration barrier when an ion, uh, which an ion faces entering and going through the pore. And uh, in many recent publications, we can see uh, that the energy profile is analyzed and uh, explained in terms of hydration, but the uh, cause of this uh, hydration uh, barrier, which is faced by the iron, is uh, the water distribution or redistribution when iron moves through the nanopore. And uh, although routinely MD simulations report these uh, hydration patterns, hydration numbers, uh, we, we don't see the analytical treatment. So in my presentation today, I'm showing you a relatively simple and fast uh, analytical method uh, capable of describing hydration patterns uh, around ions uh, near nanopores. So we begin <clears throat> from a classical statistical mechanics, uh, Hamiltonian description with coordinates and uh, momenta uh, of all parties involved into this system. Uh, so, uh, but as long as uh, we are having so many degrees of freedom, it would be impossible to treat it. That's why uh, we need to find another approximation for the energy of a water molecule uh, in the system. And this it can be given by the uh, potential of the mean force. Potential of the mean force is such a quantity after differentiating which you will get the force which is acting on, on the iron, for instance, on average. So uh, here we are showing that uh, it can be decomposed into, uh, com uh, into components. One is interaction of water with iron, and second is interaction with the lattice, with all carbon atoms uh, of the lattice. Uh, and using the rigorous uh, statistical mechanical uh, inter uh, relation between the PMF and the RDF, sorry, the correlation function, and reducing the correlation function to one-dimensional radial distribution function, uh, we can get a relatively simple uh, equation, which is shown um, uh, in, the, in the square. So uh, this equation contains two components, as I said. One uh, is, the inter uh, is the distribution created, by the, um, uh, created around the iron, and a uh, second term, which is uh, so we each of which it is a product, uh, each of the components uh, of which are centered on the lattice 
atoms. And the RDFs uh, are here are shown on the right for potassium and for and for uh, carbon. So uh, once again, uh, the density in respect to uh, the bulk is given uh, by a relatively simple product of two components. So what we do, we measure RDFs in free bulk for a single entity, for instance, for a single carbon atom uh, or for a single uh, potassium ion, but plus uh, neutralizing chloride, but uh, this is just to uh, have a consistent uh, MD simulation. Uh, for, and this simulation is relatively short. Uh, for and for the given temperature and pressure, we can uh, keep using these values uh, in the, uh, without recalculating them. But I would also like to mention that RDFs can be measured experimentally, uh, as was mentioned uh, in one of the presentations on Tuesday. Uh, uh, but in this particular one, uh, for consistency purposes, we will just rely on the uh, MD simulations. And another note uh, which I would like to make is that our method does not substitute uh, molecular dynamics simulations or the ref si reference site interaction model. Uh, so we can uh, provide a reasonable, uh, reasonable approximation, but if somebody is after more advanced and more precise um, measurements, uh, we need to use more sophisticated techniques. So what do we get? First, uh, here is a pattern of hydration. Uh, which you can see uh, around an ion. So we have an ion, we have carbon nanopore, so it's just a half, uh, half of the nanopore to show the slice. And uh, we show the isosurfaces of water density which surrounds the water uh, around this system. Because these are isosurfaces above the unit uh, density, uh, we have these layers. And uh, interestingly, you can see a uh, superposition of two, well, three uh, ingredients. First is layers of uh, water near the graphene lattice, which is intuitively clear because the lattice is plain and all the contributions from uh, atoms, from carbon atoms, sum up to a plane. Then we have a spherically symmetrical wave uh, around the nine, because, uh, well, once again, it's a spherically symmetrical uh, distribution. And finally, there is a contribution of the pore or uh, of the atoms which are lacking in the lattice. And you can see quite a good agreement. Uh, we obviously just, uh, reproduce the layers, uh, the shells, first shell, second hydration shell, which is, uh, as you can see, is very strongly fragmented. That's why all these uh, compl complex structures can be captured uh, quite well by, by our method. Uh, and uh, yeah, we, we can see quite good agreement. Uh, so the reason why there is a third layer is uh, because near the wall uh, we see layering of water. This is a well-known phenomenon. Uh, and by choosing just the ISO value, uh, we can capture uh, this third peak as well. Uh, what I would also like to uh, note that uh, on one, I would like to make a note on one of the weaknesses of our method is the overestimation of density peaks. Uh, so uh, this is because we uh, omitted the water water interactions from our statistical uh, analysis and that's why uh, when the water molecules are confined uh, this may lead to overestimation and currently we are working on uh, eliminating this issue okay so next uh, we, we can show that our method works well for uh, arbitrary positions of the ion and it's very easy to compute it so on the left, you see MD simulation, uh, separate simulations, and on the right, our method predicting the same distribution. So again, uh, quite a good agreement is observed. And uh, on the right, this is a similar picture, but along the arbitrary trajectory of an ion uh, traverses the pore. Why is it needed? Because ions don't always move in a straight line, and we need to be able to describe salvation pattern uh, for an arbitrary location along arbitrary trajectory to uh, describe transport through nanopores uh, uh, in arbitrary conditions. Right. Then uh, this uh, analytical method is capable of describing the positions of uh, trapped water molecules. Trapped water is here given by these islands, uh, very localized and sharp uh, islands of 
uh, water density. And indeed, uh, here you can see that the first inhydration shells are shown by the um, circles, while the dark island here is shown uh, by, um, it indicates the position of the trapped water. Uh, this method was, works not only for uh, potassium, as uh, has been shown before, but also for chloride, sodium, and we even dried calcium. So obviously for different ions, there will be different RDFs and different patterns, but just by switching the uh, distribution function, you can easily get the distribution uh, in the system even without MMD simulation. We can also capture the different uh, different uh, pore sizes. So, for instance, on the top you see the different uh, uh, pore sizes in graphene, and on the bottom these are patterns described by our method uh, well, using our, our approach. And on the top uh, we extend uh, the description to take into account more uh, layers of graphene. So, on the left is a picture of, from a paper published in uh, 2019. Uh, where the authors studied the transport of water through a thick uh, layer of carbon. And on the right, we see the same a similar picture obtained by our method. So you see this uh, complex structure of uh, clusters and fingers of this sort of flipped, um, uh, flipped crown. And final uh, result here is that we can, uh, using this, this analytical method, uh, can account for different features uh, that affect the pore and, uh, and the lysis itself. So, uh, for instance, one of the examples is uh, the strain. So, by st it has been recently shown that by stretching the nanopore, you can change the current significantly, uh, and this strain can be also uh, in anisotropic. Uh, then the structure can be also bent and twisted, um, and obviously the pattern changes. Uh, but also from experimental point of view, <clears throat> it's interesting that um, we are capable of uh, we are capable of describing uh, hydration patterns around arbitrary shape, arbitrary geometries of pores, uh, and this is extremely important because experimentally uh, pores are not uh, controlled, uh, especially in sub nanometer range, and that's why uh, we need to be capable of describing the solution of this arbitrarily. Uh, shaped pores in order to describe transport. Uh, we can also consider uh, different charges on the rim and different um, type of atoms. For instance, on the bottom right, uh, this uh, illustration mimics uh, having oxygens on the rim of the pore. Uh, so, uh, why is it interesting? Because uh, in terms of uh, mimic biological structures, uh, we need to uh, have an analogy to a biological selectivity filter, which has, uh, say, uh, oxygen uh, charged, obviously negatively uh, charged oxygen atoms um, uh, around ions, and obviously the structure of uh, water will change according to the uh, properties of these atoms. So this can, these properties can be uh, captured in our method by either changing the RDF or uh, changing the NART join parameters uh, in your system and then um, just uh, get another idea. All right, so how all these can be used? Uh, first, we can provide a fundamental insight into the charge distribution, uh, water distribution obviously, and electrostatics and uh, the electric properties and the interaction of ions at nanoscale. I would emphasize that these uh, issues are uh, largely unsolved, especially the electric properties are, uh, at the nanoscale at the, at the present time. But primarily, uh, our desire is to get an analytical approximation for the potential of mean force and, as a consequence, uh, for the transport pro properties of nanopores. This would be of <clears throat> extreme uh, importance for optimization and device, oh, sorry, optimization and design of uh, devices with on-demand uh, selective and conductive properties. And um, uh, for instance, uh, one of the applications could be water desalination uh, to maximize quality and uh, energy efficiency of the, of the process to, so in other words, to minimize the energy cost, then energy harvesting to maximize the energy conversion and to uh, make it economically viable in DNA sequencing to make it 
uh, to slow down the DNA translocation uh, and to uh, maybe improve the precision of sequencing and genome material genome initiative where we could we could catalog the uh, transport properties of salvated uh, nanopores. So to summarize, we have proposed <coughs> a fast analytical method uh, of quantifying hydration patterns. Then uh, it is capable of uh, taking into account all, uh, various intrinsic and intrinsic features of nanopores, as well as uh, it provides a fundamental insight into the properties uh, of uh, very interesting electric properties, say, and uh, uh, transport uh, properties of ions in sub nanopores. And <clears throat> this work uh, ultimately leads to. Uh, this design and optimization of uh, devices uh, towards selectivity and conductivity um, when we can tune these properties, say, by uh, changing them externally or by uh, choosing the correct nanopore. So one of the next steps uh, for our work is to account for the hydrogen density and include it into the PMF of a single ion which is uh, one of the key ingredients and descriptors of the energy landscape. Uh, and uh, one more line of thought here is to consider uh, density dynamics in non-equilibrium processes, such as translocation of the DNA itself or um, transport of ions through nanopores. So if you are interested, please uh, have a look on our uh, PDF, which is attached to the poster, or uh, have a look online on the research square. Finally, I would like to note that uh, I'm currently looking for a postdoc position, so if you've got a suggestion, please let me know. Thanks for your attention. So let us all thank Miroslav for his great talk. And, um, and while we wait for questions that will pop up in chat, I want to ask uh, you a curiosity of mine, uh, whether or not you envision a possibility to um, uh, computationally uh, generate uh, materials, 2D materials in this case, that optimize certain properties uh, and uh, whether or not you are you will work on that or you're thinking about this in the future. Yes, so as I said, this is exactly one of the objectives for our work uh, because this uh, approach has a very fundamental um, consequences for uh, a whole br branch of different mm -hmm. uh, applications and uh, yes by the idea of this method uh, is that by choosing and twisting sorry tuning the properties uh, which i mentioned intrinsic or extrinsic you can tune the properties mm -hmm. of, of the transport uh, i will give you an, an example uh, so um, several years ago uh, there was a paper uh, published by uh, by Professor Corey, where they tried to mimic uh, the selectivity filter of the biologically important KCSA channel. So they used a simple graphene sheet uh, with a functional group, I think, kind uh, uh, carbonyl, if I remember. Uh, and um, this was one of the first and very bright examples how it can be done. But is it optimal or not? That's this question still remains. Uh, for instance, what um, what lattice can we choose? What is the shape of the pore? What is the size of the pore? Uh, what functional groups should we put? Mm -hmm. uh, what is the strain and twist and uh, temperature and pressure of this yeah. system? So if we can optimize uh, these properties in order to get the maximal selectivity, because as you know, KCSA it has extremely uh, high selectivity of potassium over sodium, then we will uh, well, we'll make a huge step forward. Yeah, so, yes, uh, related, to, related to this, do you think you can uh, actually try to find the uh, mapping, the ma ma possible mapping between uh, translocation free energies and the per peculiar uh, charge arrangement uh, around the pore? Or you believe that this is, you believe that it's possible, it's, right? It's not that, yeah, yeah this is uh, another key uh, thing which mm -hmm. we are working on. And uh, when I mentioned the PMF, this is, the energy landscape is, this is exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. So uh, th this is uh, not that straightforward, I have to mm. say, because we don't yeah. have only charge, but we also have uh, shared range interactions. Sure, sure. Uh, and obviously this is not such a <laughs> trivial problem to treat, uh, but um, yes, uh, in principle, just, just let us consider very 
toy model. Uh, if you have the charge distribution, which is given by oxygens and uh, hydrogens, uh, you get a simply charge distribution in space. Charge distribution gives you the uh, field, and field gives you the potential. So this is the energy. Well, I'm, uh, once again, I, it's an approximation. So obviously yeah. we are missing but, uh, components. Uh, Yes, there are also questions in chat that I'm going to read right now. Uh, we have mm -hmm. uh, a question from Gonzalo Paolo, who asks, uh, computationally, how does, how does your method compare to MD simulations you are comparing them to? Are they significantly faster? Yes. Uh, so um, uh, this method, by the way, I should have mentioned this initially, uh, it was applied uh, for salvation of a DNA and uh, I, uh, ice water interface by Professor Hammer. And uh, they claim that the speed up is about 10,000 times. So uh, obviously nowadays computers are faster, uh, but it's still orders of magnitude because it's basically, it takes literally seconds to get this pattern which you saw, uh, while for a, a, even 10 nanoseconds it takes several hours on a computer. Yeah, and th this so is much. the advantage because you know. Sorry for sorry for interrupting. Please, please. Uh, in order in order to design the properties, as as you asked me in the first instance, uh, we need to scan through many many variations of properties, many many structures, and uh, even if you have a pocket supercomputer, uh, I don't think it's feasible. So, but if you can do it, uh, at least some crude approximation, which will make sense, this will give you a huge boost in terms of. Uh, generating these properties and evaluating them. I guess you can somehow relate to the curse of dimensionality that was mentioned in the earlier talks. So, 